Okay, so I've already started sewing part of this lamb here, and I started, this is the bottom now of the lamb, and I started a little bit beyond the first hump. Um, and then we're going to end up stopping over here so we leave an opening so we can turn the lamb inside out, okay? But I wanted to get some of it done. I got, I sewed all around his head already because uh, I wanted to show you what happens when we get to that tail. And we can take out our pin and put it back in our sewing uh, pin holder thing. And we're going to keep going now, and I'm going to show you how I open this up, and I'm going to now fold that tail, like I was telling you about in part one. Put it down on the tip of that tail there, and hold it in place. Put the bottom down, and hold all that in place, and we're going to keep going. And now with that tail folded in half, we're going to go around that corner and now that tail is folded and it's there and it's ready to go. I'm just going to keep following the pattern. Got about a half inch seam, whatever you need to use for a seam to get around these legs. And I kind of maneuvered a little bit to go around the back hoof. A little slower. And then back up a little bit. And then we lift it up, pull it out, get our little scissors, and we cut our strings. Take out the other pins, put them away. And now we're going to turn our lamb inside out. And I didn't leave much of a space there to do it, so me, I'll just have to, I'll just pull it open. See, I am, I am not all that anal. I'm not going to get a seam ripper or anything like that. I'll just pull it open a little bit where I need to and then start turning it inside out. This takes a couple of seconds. Sometimes you have to get a little tool to help you out. And I do have one around here somewhere, but I can also use the tip of a pencil or a pen or something along those lines to get it done. It takes a few seconds, you know, wrestle with it a little, little bit. We got one thing out here. We got the tail out. <laughs> I'm just going to keep going. Get a leg, and I want to show you how all that works together with that felt there. And we got most of it out. See, now I'm going to push this leg out like that, and then if you just flip them up, you've got yourself the foot. Let me see if I can get that done a little bit better. And you know, I'm doing this not even knowing if it's going to come out perfect enough because I'm going to show you how you can fix it. Because what did I tell you before? Nothing in primitive painting or crafting is perfect and that's what makes it primitive it doesn't have to be a perfect looking uh, primitive looking lamb just want it to work you know so now we're going to push that head out i got a pen in there now helping me get all this out of here and just we'll just pull it by the black okay Pull it, stick our finger in there, make sure it's out as far as it's supposed to go. And you see how this black, the felt is in two pieces, but if you just take it and flip it over, it's going to give you that face when you fill it, okay? Now look at these. Now these ended up almost sewing on their sides, so instead of having the round parts showing, I ended up with that. So guess what I'm going to do? I'm just going to trim off the corner of that. And then once these are filled, these will come out also. Still look a little bit squared. Just trim them. It's not a big deal. It's nothing to get all freaked out about and get your seam ripper out and spend six hours trying to fix one little lamb. All we want is a little black showing down there for feet. I mean, it's not a big deal. We don't really have to, you know, make it so that it's perfect. If you want, next time, make them a little bit bigger. I'll probably make them a little bit bigger myself. Here's that tail. Just pull on it a little bit. You see how the crease is down here this time, where on this other lamb, the crease ended up where the tail was facing up. Hey, you know, lambs have their emotions too, or sheep, and uh, they might want their, you know, 
their tail up it they might have their tail up some days and some days they might have it with the creases down and the tail will be down I actually think that tail's a little bit too long so I'm just gonna fold them together and trim it make a little bit shorter tail round off the tips you know you're talking about a couple of pennies worth of felt here this is not rocket science all right so there you have it now what you're going to do is you're going to stuff that and this is where that opening comes in at the bottom you see the opening i had left at the bottom after you turn it inside out you're going to fill it with some stuffing and really stuff it pretty good and then what happens is you're going to do some hand sewing down here and this is the worst part for me i cannot stand sewing by hand i'm always sticking myself with the needle and everything else so hopefully um the fact that I only leave these little openings is fine because it's just a small amount that I do, but there's no way I would hand sew this whole thing around. Get out your machine. I told you what I do with my machine. I grab it by the handle and I pick it up from my side of my chair where I've always got it ready. If you look at my craft room videos and you, uh, you know, you'll hear when I, when I talk about how I, why I have my sewing uh, machine right near my feet. So everything is at all, it's all about, you know, convenience for me. And efficiency in my uh, craft room not so much organization but conveniency and efficiency so now that it's stuffed you'll do that you'll put them together okay now we have my finished lamb here and you remember those t-shirts I was telling you about that I cut up for the candy canes well I just take one of those strips and and put it around his neck but let me show you how I do its face the face is um I cut out a piece of felt to, and it looks like a, an old time mustache, you know, it's a little bit thin in the middle and then it comes out on one end like a teardrop and the other end on a teardrop. And then I just fold that over the top here of the head and then I just sew really tight. I go inside the lamb, sew and go back and go back and go back and um, until I have it the way I want it. If you want, you can fold them, fold these while you're doing it or make them look a little bit like they're sticking out. They can just be straight down like that. It doesn't matter. I got mine looking so that they're sticking straight up. But it's, this is one piece of material. If you can see, if I can lift this up, you'll see that it's just, you know, the middle of that mustache goes over the top here, and then you sew tightly in there, and it makes these pop out. As far as the eyes, um, I take a white thread, and I double string it on a, uh, to make it thick. You want a, thick, a fixed thread or even a string or something like that you can use. But um, I used a thick thread. And if you don't know what a French knot is in embroidery, please look it up because it'll tell you how to make these eyes. Because I, what I do is I, I hold the needle. Let me see. I have a, I have a needle that's already strung up here. And uh, first thing I'll do is I go through his head and go out the other side like this. And then on this side, I will take the string and wrap it around this needle about six times and then put it back through. And then when I go to pull it tight, it'll make a French knot on the other end. Okay. And that's how you do the eyes. You do on one side and then you pull it tight, do a French knot on the other side. All right. Then before you do anything else, put it back through that eye and out to the center of the nose. All right, so that you have string here. And then you hold the string down, go next to the string, and then out his cheek. Like that. Okay, so now you've got a tight piece of material, of tight going on there. And then hold it while you're bringing it down and around to the other side where it matches. And then You'll put it back through here and out the other to the other side of the cheek. I hope you're getting all this because it's a little hard to show you when I'm sewing anyway. To the other side of the cheek, okay? And then back down through the middle, up through the nose again. Or actually, up through the eye again. And then if it's, if it's small enough, you don't have to do this route. But you would go back up through the eye, down again, through the eye, and where you hide this is behind the ear. You'll take the string, go behind the ear, and that's where you'll make your knot. Um, you hide all your knots behind the ear. And then once you do all that, 
And I've got this string all wrapped up in here now. Um, you know, you'll have your finished lamb without all these strings hanging from me showing you how to do it. I'll cut those off in a minute. And, and that's it. You know, that's your completed piece, completed primitive lamb. And uh, it comes out, I think it comes out really cute. It's just a little stuffed animal. Um, there's no buttons in it, which is the good thing about it, is there are no buttons to, uh, for the little children to get, you know, hurt with or anything of the sort. And so it's, it's really good for them to play with. And, um, you know, it's just, it, it's just a really fun little, little uh, primitive looking lamb. And people can display them in their homes or um, change the strip. Um, they can just, you know, prop them up against something. They don't stand on their own, but if you prop them up against something, maybe an old bucket or something that you have in your home, or even using them as bowl fillers, you know. Um, they're just a cute little thing to, to put out for decoration. So I hope you enjoyed it. Uh, my uh, little video here on sewing the lambs and uh, the sewing of the lambs <laughs> or the sheep, however you want to say it. And I hope you make some of your own. If you have any questions, you know where I'm at. And we'll see you next time with a different craft for today.